Hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's Power Hour. Uh, this session today is looking at extending your talent and uh, company reach, and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined today by Ori uh, Zilberstein, a Chief Business Development Officer at Hyperion Tech. Uh, welcome, Ori. Hi, it's like very nice of you to have me. I've, I've seen a lot of the Power Hours, so it's like, you know, it's a great honor to be here, yeah? <laughs> Greg, it was great to have you on board. So thank you. Um, now we're, we're looking at sort of um, sort of remote teams and, and how that sort of can in, integrate into into current current companies. Um, I would like to just put something out there and say, look, is this uh, is it more of a cost saving exercise? You see these these companies why they why they're outsourcing now nowadays, or is it more is it more um, like a, to, to help the bottom line? You know, what, what's sort of your view on that? Or, or do you think that uh, these, the, the remote working and the, sort of the remote teams that we create is, is actually beneficial for, 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 for organizations? So like, that's, a, that's a great question. I think a lot of companies, when they started back in the day to outsource, it was some of it was kind of a, you know, a shortcut to like increase bottom line or maybe kind of decrease the, um, the costs, but I think that what we are building now or what we are seeing is that the, it becomes more productive for companies to actually build extensions R&Ds for their own teams. It means that they have an internal team that kind of works from the inside the day to day, but they also command like a bigger external tech team that actually operates as an extension of the company. So if you think about it, the focus that we found that was more effective is at the moment those developers that sits outside are actually adapted to the company culture, then it increases the bottom line. And also it's a lot cheaper. So it's kind of a win-win situation. So although I think a lot of companies take it as a shortcut to kind of cut costs, it can be amplified much more effectively if it's done right. So, so if it's not if the company or what we saw when the company doesn't treat it as some sort of like shortcut, like, oh, let's just get these guys, they will do some work and, and that's it. But they actually treat them as part of the team. It works much better. Yeah, so I was going to say, is that, is that not, you know, is a tendency just to like, you know, you have when you outsource these kind of things, that you, the people come in, they drop in and they, they disappear. Are you saying that it's, it's much beneficial to have those teams like you, what you guys do and, and sort of have them embed into the culture almost in that, in that sort of way and sort of become become part of that team almost? In, in, in that yeah. Case. And you're finding that much Yeah, it's, it's shifting the mindset from, you know, technology, especially in iGaming. So we have a lot of iGaming and also finance and some clients that are not iGaming focused, but especially in iGaming, what we see is it's very tech oriented industry. So technology is a, a big investment for most companies. There was kind of the old school thought before the pandemic, pre-COVID, that you know all of the technology needs to be in the office. If someone doesn't work in the office, we can work with them and so on. Obviously, in 2019, when the pandemic hit, it changed every like all of these aspects because everybody works from home. Um, but then, yeah, we found that it's the moment it's been seen as a real extension of the technology uh, part, that the branch that you have in the company, it works much more effectively than if it's just some sort of, you know, pop in and out project and so on. A, a lot of developers or a lot of CTOs can relate that developers also take time to learn the system and kind of what the tech stack is. So if you bring someone from the outside and they need in two weeks to just learn the entire tech and deliver something, it's not the same if someone works on the same thing for like a year or nine months or 10 months and so on. So there's a lot of preparation work goes into this then I assume in terms of getting those, getting to understand the clients and, and, and do you have instances where you actually um, refuse clients because you're not happy with their culture or how does that operate within? within That's also a great, a great question. I think, so we are, most companies in our sector have a bench. So they have a roster yeah. of developers of all sorts of technologies there is a client coming in the door, they have some deliberation with the client, and then they decide those like other players in the sector, okay, I have these two developers that are this technology, let's just put them. It's, uh, it's kind of uh, beats the purpose because I think the client needs something very specific. And what we do is we recruit specifically for that client. So we don't have a bench. Mm -hmm. We don't have a roster of like some developers sitting there and not working. Every developer is actually very specific for a client. And we find it to be much more effective because then it's, we, we bring a team that actually 
connects with the client culture and it fits their needs by, even to the level of the CV. So we had clients that, mm -hmm. you know, they were, they said, okay, we need three developers of this kind for like three months and that's it. It's something that less us, we, we cannot work, we cannot help in that sort of, you know, plug and play, shortcut, quick wins, uh, easy fixes, stuff like that. We are much more focus on actually building extension technology for a company than, than just a project. So we had, yeah, we had clients that we had to obviously refuse, but it's it, the process. I think it's pretty, once a developer sits in the chair, it's very easy to know if they fit or not. And, and uh, the developer also knows. So it's kind of, um, it, from our experience, it usually works well. We had very few instances we needed, you know, we brought someone, they sit, they start to work, and then the client says, oh my God, what is this? But if it happens, we replace them. So it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and with this, uh, obviously, it's, been, been, it's benefited maybe you guys in, in somewhat with, with, with what's been going on with the pandemic. And have, just interested, have you seen any, have you had to change in any way, obviously, if you're, your, your uh, an outsourcing type business or talent business that would arguably easier for you to upsell and offer your services and uh, but I'm just interested internally have you seen any like changes that you've had to overcome you know we a lot of large corporations have had to completely change the way they've been doing things and just interested as as, as this is what you are good at and what you do have you actually seen any sort of um, change internally that you've had to adapt or uh yeah that's that's um so you mean from the from pre-pandemic to pandemic? I think that so yeah. so us as a company, obviously, when clients uh, build with us their extension of technology, then it's remotely. So obviously, our developers sit mm -hmm. or they sit in an office in Kharkiv in Ukraine. Uh, mm -hmm. And when the pandemic hit, the major change that we had to do for the safety of our employees, they went to work from home. Hyperion, before the pandemic, already had a policy that if you want to work from home, you can work from home. You don't have to come to the office. Um, the pandemic actually allowed us to refine kind of what processes are effective for people to be in the office for and what not, which before the pandemic, it was a little bit hard to, uh, to see. So, for example, if teams need to do brainstorming sessions or there's more high level strategic stuff, and they usually sit together in the office now in much smaller numbers because we care about their safety. But then the moment pandemic hit, we almost instantly went, this company goes remote in my view forever, which means there would be an office. If you want to work from the office, you can. If you don't want to work from the office, you can work from home. You know, there's a lot of people that, and that's the thing you learn when, it, when everybody goes to work from home. Some people cannot work from home. They have like five kids and... Uh, yeah. And the wife is already working from home and it's not really a conducive environment to then sit and concentrate and so on. And, and we need to offer these solutions. But I think from a client perspective, we anticipated like everyone that we are going to see some sort of hit. So the moment the pandemic hit, we realized everybody went into conversation to uh, conservation mode. Projects were started yeah. to be a little slower in that sense. And we also anticipated it. So we started to make some sort of preparations for that. I was yeah. very surprised that it seemed to be the exact opposite. So a few months after the pandemic hit, we started to get a lot of requests when it comes to uh, extension so we can build our idea. Everyone panicking, just going. Oh, oh so I, I think part of it was the first, the first point you mentioned. Some people realize that they can cut costs and it's much cheaper and it's, and it's yeah. a time of uncertainty. So they want it. Some companies were thinking about it, but they were not mature enough internally before the pandemic. But then after the pandemic, they said, you know what, this is the time to try it out. We, we can outsource certain parts of our technology outside. Uh, so we saw that happening. I think we were kind of lucky because the business model we work with is a lot of it is uh, remote. So processes, uh, communications, you know, everybody went to Zoom. So all of these processes we had before, People wanted to work from home. Security is like a big issue. You know, people sit with their own computers working on sensitive data. We had that sort out. Compliance when we need to deal with, we had that sort out. So these, these are kind of hurdles that I think companies dealt with in the beginning of the pandemic, which we already sorted out. And it also helped us a lot when we onboarded new clients. So when we had new clients working, it was already, yeah. it was very, um, 
relieving for clients to see that it's something that was already solved. They don't need to actually deal with all of these issues. They already have it like in, in the bag. So I think it was the biggest surprise was the uptick in how much companies in the industry wanted to all of a sudden outsource their technology. That was, uh, sure. I didn't prepare for that. It's like, <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> a good, good position. To be yeah, in, actually, yeah. But, um, but yeah, look, I mean, on, on that subject, how do you, do you ever see us going back? To, I mean, uh, I've joined I Gaming Next, the, 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 it's remote working, you know, uh, would you see, is there an argument to say hybrid or fully, fully remote or, or fully, fully physical? What, what's your sort of opinion on that? And, and, and what your clients are saying as well, I suppose. And, and that so, so before that. I was in Hyperion, I worked in one of the iGaming companies. And uh, everybody that worked with me can testify. I'm a little bit biased for office. So I'm a very much an office person. I like the coffee. I like the conversations. I like the, the fact that I can go and tap someone on the shoulder, tell, like, you know, yeah, have the, the conversation. Like sort of, um, I'm, I'm very water cooler moment. It's like, I'm very much like that. It's like, uh, so my personal bias is I wish we could all go to have like office spaces and meet one another. I think there's some, there's a, there's a quality to it that is very important in some aspects of the business, especially if it's product or marketing and stuff like that. I can say that, um, so this is to, and I will attach it to the question you asked. One of the things we saw about developers is that when they were in the office, especially all of the hyped op open office space and so on, productivity was suffering because developers a lot of the time need to focus on the task. And then the moment they had a lot of brainstorming meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings, it becomes like death by meeting, yeah? And what we saw is that, and we also, we thought it would be the opposite. The moment they went to work remote and meetings became super focused, productivity just showed up. So when it comes to brainstorming, being together and so on, everybody comes to the office or in small numbers, we do it in separate days. But then when they work, productivity just went through the roof which to me was, well, when it comes to development, not so surprising, but, but it was kind of an interesting shift to see. I think going forward, you know, there was a big kind of, um, how you call it, barrier for companies to want to outsource their tech. So most companies, mm -hmm. you would sit with a CTO of a big company and tell them, listen, I think all of your developers need to work from home. You would like splash with uh, like cold water and tell and you would tell to go lie down and rest because you're you're talking crazy. <laughs> the, the pandemic changed it to the point that it became now a leverage point for companies to offer. So mm -hmm. if a company will not offer remote working as an option, it becomes a less viable company. If I'm now relocating to Malta or not even relocating, I want to work in an iGaming company. One company will tell me you have to be in the office nine to five all the time. There is no remote working or remote working is you can choose one day a week or something. But another company would just say, listen, your job is a developer. You want to work from home? You can. You want to come to the office? You can. I know which company I would choose. So from that perspective, from a business perspective, I feel we are never going back to full office. It's going to be hybrid in my perspective just because there's a demand for it. I think it's also a smart move for companies because if I can recruit remotely, think about it. We had a huge tech shortage uh, of talent on the island in Malta. You don't have to recruit now in Malta. You can recruit anywhere in your time zone. Let's say if you don't want to go recruit in Thailand because it's like six hours like ahead. Yeah. But at the moment, it's the same time zone. You can actually have now a talent pool that is all of Europe, for example. This is this is huge. Mm -hmm. This is a huge change. I think that Does that that, make, that makes you much more competitive, I suppose, in that sort of sense, and allows allows companies to to go that extra mile, I suppose, in terms of attracting those people and give those, those benefits that are around. So, um, are we going to see much more? movement towards that, much more competition in in the, in the talent pool place. Do you think? I, I can say that we already see. So from our business model, we already see big competition in terms of a lot of companies that did not consider recruiting in like our sectors and market are now doing so. So it's so everyone that is no longer just looking for if my company is in in Germany, I'm not only looking to recruit in Germany, it becomes all of Europe and beyond. Uh, so in my view, Companies that will not offer that, the hybrid model, but really, you know, with thinking of employees, it won't be like a 
not a checkbox mentality. Oh, we did it. Our HR policy yeah. says that you have yeah. two days from home. Or if it's not going to be part of how the company works, I don't see companies surviving if they won't do that. They, they would be the... Um, it become, becomes part of the benefits or the incentives, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it will become a standard, like a 24 days holiday and, and stuff like that. If you don't give that person that flexibility, I imagine companies will be falling behind on that. On, on that yeah, I, 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 will be as bold, I, I will be as bold to say the same way iPhone, iPhone changed the, the phone industry, yeah. it's the same thing. It's like you don't go, you have a keyboard now. It's a bold you, you have a keyboard on your, uh, on your phone. You're a less viable phone. You're, you are the low-tech phone now, right? It's going to be yeah. the same. Companies, and again, it's not all industries. I'm referring to iGaming and digital industries specifically. There are retail and a lot of industries that cannot, cannot just do it from home. Yeah. But in our industry, I think that, yeah, companies that won't offer the, the hybrid model are going to be just less viable. I, it's like mm. they will have very trouble, a lot of trouble attracting talents. Or maybe, yeah. Are you seeing... Um, so you, 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 sorry, you mentioned uh, you have a client outside of iGaming. How is those industries faring compared to, to, to iGaming? Is iGaming is traditionally innovative, forward-thinking. Are, are we far ahead of everyone? Are we still got a lot of, of, of finding out to do and, and, and looking? That's, uh, and, that's, and, and can you bring suggestions? That's a really great... That's, you are, I have to tell you, you're asking like really great questions. I really enjoyed it. It's like you're... <laughs> yeah, it's like, thank you. It's not, no, not thank like you. You're like a great, great interviewer. Thank you. So... Um, there's, cer there's certain, so we have affiliates in other industries that are not iGaming, not finance, not like the typical ones. They are more retail oriented mm -hmm. on very specific niches. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. are very tech savvy. So I would say they are really comparable to, to iGaming and FinTech in the sense of the technology base. I also am involved in other projects that are more US focused and has to do with education and so on. Surprisingly, they are light years behind when it comes to technology. Oh, so it means that you could see the processes that they work between one another in the, in the funnel to get the leads and so on is very, very behind. So I would give, uh, you know, a kudos to the iGaming industry that it's very, very tech focused. The thing that I would say that the iGaming would need to focus more is actually the adaptation to what's going on now in the world, because in a lot of companies that is really falling behind. So I know for companies, it's really hard to change those sort of mindset to, for example, offer hybrid work or tell workers, listen, if you don't want to ever come to the office, you don't have to. I know it's really hard. It's really hard to change that mindset. But I, the thing is that a lot of those fears that companies have from an HR perspective, the moment they will just do it and they will let it be for a while, they will see that all of those fears just never come to be. You don't have... You know, you'll have the extreme cases of employees going rogue, but in most cases, this is not the case. It's like you don't have to have people on a leash, you know, in an office and so on. So I think in, the, in that aspect, the, the industry can improve a lot. It feels sometimes, it's like the, if you remember the old banking system, they are still existing, right? Like the old banks, comparison to Revolut, or transfer wise. Yeah. So, so compare these experiences. If you now need to go and get a credit card from your old bank, or you now need to order a credit card on Revolut or transfer wise. These are stark differences with the bank. It's going to be taking time out of your day. You need to go and do stuff. It will like be a lot of bureaucracy with Revolut. You press a button, you get it. So it's like, I think the industry needs to really improve on their kind of these sort of processes. But from a technology perspective, it's, uh, I wasn't surprised because we, you know, iGaming is really technology focused and it's been around since what, like 90s, like 888 was in 97, I think. So we are so we're developing this technology for like 20, 30 years. So it's, yeah. that, uh, that's not surprising, but um, yeah, other, there's, depends. Other industries are also tech savvy, but depends which things that I thought that would be very technology oriented where we <laughs> really not. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, look, um, I think uh, our, time, our time's up now. So um, listen, uh, Ori, um, thank you so much for your time. It'd be great to sort of revisit this, I suppose, in, in, in six months um, to see if your for, for, forecasting is true. Um, and, um, and look, it's been a pleasure understanding about you and your organization and, uh, and your thoughts for, um, for the future going forward. So, Thank you once again and hopefully uh, see you again. Thank soon. you, Rory. It was a pleasure to be in iGaming. Next.
Yeah, thank Cheers. you. Bye-bye.